Today is the day after the summer solstice, which means it's the next longest day of the year. Yesterday I was unpacking from my camping trip, which I can't wait to show you some videos of, but today I have got to get this garden cleaned up. It's always a risk to be gone for a week, and boy, does my garden need some attention. Not only do my strawberries need watering, but look at my roses. They all got that disease, whatever it is, every single, well, there's one little bud there. So those have to all be chopped back. Now look at this one strawberry pot. Notice anything weird? <laughs> look at this volunteer tomato. It has become a major plant. After my last video where I mentioned that I took a little tumble, a lot of people wrote and said, you really have to clear your paths and be careful. And there is this push-pull between having a jungle full of plants in a tiny small front yard, which makes it seem so much bigger, and being safe. And I really appreciate my viewers for reminding me that I need to clear my pathways and be safe in my garden. So today, one pathway that has to be cleared again is this one. Clearing that pathway is not even gonna be possible. <laughs> okay, this is an absolute roadblock right here. Uh, this is that sweet Annie that I said was gonna grow up taller than the African blue basil. And these are all these vines from this tomato plant that was just a string bean about February. This is the gorgeous tropical milkweed. Sweet Annie volunteer. Another one another one and all this borage is volunteer and falling this is the opposite view these are the beans and this is the lemon verbena that's now blooming gorgeous and smells divine the beans are down there and all of these tomatoes were unsupported and they just grow towards the sun and then collapse. I have a ton of this, a ton of that. So all that's got to be cleaned up. Right there is the Cape Gooseberry coming from that plant and then going back, going all the way to the ground, dipping up and then coming up well, actually, the top of it is right by the where the nasturtium is. So the nasturtium just grows up a vine. From here, you see a, a better look of the fig trees, how filled out they are. Over here, I've got a bunch of tomatoes, but look at all of this yellow stuff. Never had quite so much dramatic yellow. So once again, I'm not sure what's going on here. But it's all collapsed down into the wild marjoram or oregano. And look at this beautiful carrot. Finally, I waited so long for this carrot to bloom. And look at that stunning flower. That is a carrot, my friends. A carrot blooming. One carrot. All of this.
And my fennel's still blooming, but boy is it a mess. Like my peppers, all of my snapdragons have gotten this fungus. So since this one is almost finished blooming, I'm going to cut it all the way back. And it should grow back. My hummingbird feeder is empty. I have to fill that up. Remember the loofah that I thinned out? So I've got one, two, three, four that, mm, that one looks pretty promising. So five that look quite promising and those should be repotted. And the one bean is still growing, although it's not looking too strong. Look at all these gorgeous four clocks that are now blooming. Okay, that's got to be cleaned up. It needs a little fertilizer and watering. These are some big packages, which you're going to hear more about in a separate video. Someone asked how my driveway project is going, my three sisters. So here's the big reveal. This zucchini wants to take over the entire thing. Some of the corn is doing better than others. And I've got about five bean plants in there that are like that tall. <laughs> in the Three Sisters approach, the timing is important. When to plant the squash seeds, when to plant the corn seeds, when to plant the bean seeds. And you're supposed to give corn a head start. My apples are actually getting bigger. And someone wrote and said that a first year crop of an heirloom, I don't know if this is an heirloom, but it's a golden dorset, are always smaller. This one is the biggest one, I think. I just want to see if they get golden. This is the reverse view of the oregano and tomato with all the yellow and brown leaves. No ripe fruit. And my fennel is a bit of a mess. When it's hanging over, encroaching on the sidewalk like this, I get a little nervous. So I'm going to have to stake this up and clean it up. This is my overwintered indigo rose tomato and it's covered in dried up leaves but I have ripe tomatoes and I actually tasted about five of them and they were so delicious last night so I'm going to harvest the tomatoes and clean up this vine and see what else it will produce just a quick look at the driveway garden in the back this is the new watermelon, and this particular vine is covered in mildew. The pepper looks like it's doing okay. These are the Iitoi onions. The papaya actually looks like it's growing. I really should have measured it. We had a female fruit on this squash, but it didn't get pollinated. We've got another female back here, fingers crossed. Quick look at some gorgeous passion fruit. These ripen when they're sort of purplish gray. They fall off and they're still quite smooth and round. And you take them into your kitchen, you leave them there for a week or two and they ripen up and shrivel up and just get gooey inside and that's what you actually scrape out and eat. I said I was going to keep these tomatoes in these pots pruned because it would be hard to manage them in these soft pots in terms of how do you support them. So that didn't happen. It looks like they've all split and gotten major suckers. If you're growing squash for the first time, I do have a squash video about how to pollinate the flowers and explaining the process. 
So be sure and go to that link and watch that. So it's pretty clear that something's going on with my potato. This just may just be ready to harvest. But some of the other ones like this are not ready. And I rarely have a potato that blooms, so it's hard to know what's going on in there. This is my new potato that I grew, that I planted just about three weeks ago, I guess. So I was super proud of myself, packing up my car, driving to Big Sur, setting up my own campsite, setting up my own tent, packing it all up, driving home, shooting videos, and yesterday I put everything away except for my tent, which got dirty. <laughs> And it was a little bit wet when I left. So it's still hanging here. Okay, I got a lot of passion fruit hanging here. I say at least a hundred. Finally, I get to try one of my boysenberry. They come right off when they're ripe. Um, mm. Mm. Sweet, delicious. <gasps> Look what I just saw. What did I just get through telling you? My potatoes never bloom, right? <laughs> Check this out. Ta-da. This is what keeps things interesting when you grow annuals. Even some perennials can surprise you. But you forget about it and then look at this. Wow! Look at that carrot. Oh, it smells great. Mmm! How did these get so big? Remember like a couple of weeks ago they were... Oh! tiny. Look at the size of that. That's a biggie. <laughs> wow. I think they're all done. This is the big, ooh! <laughs> I'm gonna have to bend the wire to get it out. This was an unexpected surprise. I didn't even think of this today. But look at that. My only carrot harvest this year, this entire handful. <laughs>
Even though this leak is not as fat as I would like, I didn't thin it out and it's right beside two others and it's putting up a flower stalk. So I'm gonna take this one today. And they go down pretty deep, so you really need to dig them out. Don't try to pull them out. This is gonna be a miracle getting this out intact. Oh, oh, that's my fault. Oh, brother. I'm gonna take a couple of baby beets. So I'm on a mission to find at least one potato because I'm going to make roasted vegetables, the most simple dish, but with fresh herbs. It's just incredible. When I need a potato, and there better be one down here is all I got to say. Well, there's one. Oh, that's a... That's a huckleberry gold. I love those. I forgot what I planted. Here's another one. Nice. Ooh, I feel something. I feel something big. Okay, here we go. Yeah. There we go. Now I'm happy. I think this is gonna be roasted vegetables for two. Okay, this is what's so interesting about gardening is you can go outside with one plan, like I was just gonna do major cleanup today, and I didn't even realize I might have a harvest. This is my first official harvest of the season, and yes, carrots are cool season vegetables, so are leeks. But I have all of this produce and I thought I should make something. And I can always do cleanup tomorrow. <laughs> Today I have my first tomatoes. These are actually small, but they're indigo rose. These are desert figs. Huckleberry gold potato. These carrots are Danvers 126 heirloom. And in, it says, in addition to classic flavor, Danvers is excellent in heavy soils and is resistant to cracks and splits. And if you've watched my channel for a long time, you know I've had plenty of splits. <laughs> These are botanical interest seeds. And I have berries, strawberries, a handful, and my first harvest of boysenberry and the last of the blueberries and these are going I'm going to save for fresh because there's nothing more nutritious than fresh berries and you lose a lot of the nutrition when you cook them I've got beet pods with seeds ready to save and a couple of uh, oranges and lemons from my tree this is a lemon <laughs> A Meyer lemon. Yes, I grow them big. And uh, I've got three little baby beets. And so I thought I might make a little classic dish of roasted vegetables with the three beets, the three potatoes, a couple of these monster carrots, and fresh herbs. I have thyme, variegated thyme, rosemary, more thyme, more rosemary. I have 
lemon verbena, which smells incredible. And I've got Italian oregano and basil. Doesn't that sound great? And I harvested my first apple. It's not yellow or gold, but at least it's all green. And I am going to put this in my dish and roast it with my vegetables. So let's get started. Just wanted to show you my apple before I put it in. Now I'm drizzling extra virgin olive oil, fresh cracked pepper. I like pepper. Just a pinch of salt and some of my homegrown coriander seed. Coriander on everything. Now this goes into the oven until the vegetables are tender. Dottie, the master gardener who was in my roses video, suggested that this might be Botrytis, which is very deadly to the blooms. And I'm wondering if it could be carried by these caterpillars that eat the backside of the leaves. At any rate, they all had to come off. When you go away, the first two things you have to do when you get back is water and harvest. I just want to compare these two pepper plants because this one has just been eaten alive. The jalapeno has been unscathed from bugs, pretty much. And this is the red bell pepper and it's been eaten alive. Okay, let's check the vegetables. I did put a foil on, forgot to mention that, just so they don't dry out. And look at that. Wow, look at that is that gorgeous, beautiful display, and it was so simple. Let's just test it. Apples are tender. Potatoes, pretty tender. Um, what else? Carrots. Yeah, I think we need at least five more minutes. Meanwhile, I whipped up some quinoa with the beet tops. I put the beet tops in just for the last five minutes of steaming the quinoa, so they would be almost raw. And I cut open two figs, and look how amazing. So that's just gonna be like, almost like adding a sauce to the quinoa. I'm totally making this up as I go. <laughs> I just want to use my figs and they're so ripe if I don't do it. They won't get eaten. Now I put a little ghee in this, but if you want to keep it vegan, you could just use olive oil. 
or just water or broth, vegetable broth, when you cook it. Okay, we'll see how that tastes. Here's my wonderful meal. Well, I thought I would probably just have granola for breakfast, but uh, surprise, surprise. Okay, let's try the carrot. Mmm, firm. Mmm. But those herbs, what a wonderful flavor. Mmm. The secret to having them all done at the right amount is to kind of cut the pieces in such a way that they'll cook about the same amount of time. And the carrots could have been cubed one more time. Mm. I grew everything on this plate except for the ghee and the extra virgin olive oil and salt and pepper. Mm. Mm. Oh, those tomatoes are so good. I can't wait for more. Mm. Come back for the very next video to see all the work I haven't gotten done yet. Thanks so much for watching this channel, liking my videos, and sharing them with your friends. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. And if you enjoyed this one, why not try these? Mm. I'm going to do that quinoa in a separate video, separate cooking video.